What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Nigel that is now a hurricane in the central Atlantic Ocean. We have the new the area of interest that is continuing to show a lot of signs of quick development. And we have a new AOI that has been tagged off the coast of the Bahamas near the U.S. coast. We're going to cover all of that for you today. So that way you are ahead of speed and know what's going on. So here's the cliff notes. We have Hurricane Nigel right here. Currently, maximum sustained winds are 80 miles per hour. Pressure is 984 millibars. Its current location is 27.2 degrees north, 51.4 degrees west, and is moving northwest at 12 miles per hour. Here's the cone that we have pulled up for you right here. It is expected to continue intensifying into a hurricane, becoming a major hurricane by tomorrow, uh, by tomorrow morning, and then starting to make that turn and then head towards potentially new uh, heads towards the British Virgin Islands as an extra tropical cyclone. So that's what we have going on right there. Here's the public advisory as right here. Hurricane force winds extend out 25 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extend out 160 miles from the center. It's uh, Nigel is forecast to rapidly strengthen into a major hurricane Tuesday. Gradual weakening trend is expected starting Wednesday. Here's some of the discussion right here. As you can see, in the next 24 hours, it's expected to go from 80 to 115 miles per hour. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on that for shipping interests, as well as a potential threat towards Bermuda once again. During the next day or so, the hurricane should remain in an environment quite conducive for strengthening. Vertical shear is forecast to remain very low, and sea surface temperatures are near 28 degrees Celsius. The ship's rapid intensification index continues to show above normal probabilities of RI, which is rapid intensification. In, accordingly, the official forecast shows it calls for a 30 knot increase in intensity during the next 24 hours. In a couple of day, in a couple of days, the increasing shear and cooler waters are likely to result in the beginning of a gradual weakening trend. Four to five days is expected to become involved in a frontal area over the North Atlantic. It is expected to then become extra tropical in five days, although the transition could occur a little sooner than that. So that's what we have going on right here. And the quicker this thing strengthens, the quicker this thing will move, and the quicker that turn will begin, and it'll clear up uh, basically and clear this whole thing up and potentially strengthen the Bermuda High for another potential threat right here, which is this area of interest that is currently not exactly on the Atlantic yet. It's currently off the coast in on Africa right now. It's expected to move off the coast in the next couple of days. A tropical wave is forecast to move off the west coast of Africa by Wednesday, as I just said. Environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for gradual development of the wave thereafter, and a tropical depression is likely to form that late this week or this weekend while the system moves westward across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. Take a look at this. We now have a 70% chance of formation in the next seven days. It was at 40% yet, uh, yesterday when we reported it here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. So that's telling me that the NHC, even though we still have two days before this thing comes off the coast, that's telling me the NHC is very confident that this thing is going to develop. So we'll have to keep a very, very close eye on this as time continues to progress. But this is also another area of interest that I'm waiting on right here. A non-tropical area of low pressure is forecast to form near the southeastern coast of the United States late this week. The system could acquire some subtropical characteristics this weekend if it remains offshore while slowly moving northward or northwestward. About 30% chance in the next seven days. Keep in mind, they tagged this area of interest last night due to increasing mild trends of this potentially organizing and developing. We'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to progress. There's still a lot of uncertainties going into this, but there is one thing for certain, and that the tropics are not done yet. We'll have to keep an eye on for poten uh, potential land impacts, especially with this area of interest down the road and this one over here. So that's the situation we have going on right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs. We're going to start with the European and then move down the road. Here's what the European has. The system maintains category, uh, category 1 intensity. However, the pressure they're calling for is 985. I mean, Nigel at this point is already 984 millibars, so we're pretty much ahead of schedule at this point. In fact, we're not. It's in fact, it's actually stronger than the Europe, 0Z European is actually for, initially forecasting at this point. 
then this area of interest starts to organize and develop in the Atlantic. We have this subtropical potential low that's organizing and developing off the coast of the Bahamas and Florida right here. And then both of them start to or uh, gradually organize. This one organizes a lot quicker than this one. This Bermuda high right here sets up pr quite nicely for this thing to continue moving pretty much due west. While this thing continues to, well, it's we're not 100% sure what that will do at the end of it, but it is expected at this time to hit potentially the Carolinas at this point. And then we have a weakening part of the Bermuda high, and then that starts to come back. And then we have a well, we have a decent uh, strength uh, Bermuda high that pushes a lot further to the south, according to the long-term European run right here. We'll have to see how this whole thing plays out, but I will tell you this. The longer it takes for this to develop, the higher of a chance down the road there's going to be some land impacts. So that's what we have for the European. Here's the GFS. GFS has this thing getting down to a 964 millibar hurricane at this time. In the meantime, this thing starts to organize and gradually develop as it comes off the coast of Africa. The GFS is still calling for this thing to, uh, to develop off the coast of the Bahamas, off the coast of Georgia and the Carolinas before making landfall there. So we'll have to keep an eye on it and see how that plays out. Well, we're, there's definitely some conditions that are there. The GFS, I'm not sure why, what the GFS is doing with the system. We'll go ahead and show. We'll go ahead and show you the shear forecast from the GFS. Yeah, I, so we'll have to pay attention to this, but. Yeah, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure. I, I know for er earlier runs had the sheer murdering this, which I looked at it and I was like, yeah, no. If Nigel moves away in time, there's no way Shear's going to be murdering it at that point. So that's what the GFS has. We're throwing the GFS out at this point. It's pretty. It's not a very reliable model at this current time. CMC has uh, this thing organizing and developing, while the CMC also, interestingly enough, has this thing organizing down to a 995 millibar system, bringing lots of impacts to North Carolina and Virginia over here. So we'll have to keep a very close eye because that's only five days down the road. So if this thing becomes tropical, we'll have to uh, monitor it for sure. That could definitely be a strong tropical storm right there. Meanwhile, this thing starts to gradually organize and develop, strengthens up to a hurricane. A new high-pressure system starts building up uh, near the Newfoundland right here, which will probably keep it moving towards the west down the road, according to the CMC. So that's what we have going on, at least with that right there. Next one we're showing you is the NavGem. NavGem... Uh, has this thing organizing and developing, gets it down to tropical storm strength by the time this high starts setting up. Nine, uh, 1031 millibar high right here. Definitely strong. Excuse me, definitely strong enough to really uh, really push this thing further and further to the west right here. So we'll have to monitor it as time continues to go on. Last one we're showing you is the Icon model. And the Icon has this thing gradually organizing, developing, starting to slowly strengthen, and actually having it pushing further to the west, similar to what I've been saying about weaker storms are going to push a bit further to the west and potentially increase land impacts down the road. Last thing I want to go ahead and show you, I want to go ahead and kind of show you the shear forecast based off of the European to kind of get a better gauge of what we're thinking is going to, uh, is going to happen right here. By the time this whole thing starts to grow, uh, to move off the coast of Africa. There is a bit of shear to the north of it, and there, uh, there is a bit of shear of, to the north of it for sure, but by the time it moves into the main development region, that shear, although it's it, although it does appear that it's going to be there, it's mo mainly due to outflow right there, and that shear is going to be uh, mainly uh, start uh, mainly start to recede over there. Meanwhile, with this Bahama storm, there's going to be a pocket of low wind shear that if it can exploit, things could go haywire pretty quickly, according to the European right here. So that's the situation we have going on right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some uh, some of the track models and intensity of what is Hurricane Nigel is going to do. Track models for Nigel, yeah, disregard this whole thing right here. It's basically 12Z, a 12Z model playing 12Z games. And then, th meanwhile, this thing is expected to turn, then move pretty much, uh, pretty much at a very fast pace over the Atlantic, and potentially bring impacts to England in the next few d uh, days or so. So, for all of our viewers from the United Kingdom, you guys are going to have to keep an eye out. We'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. So, be sure you subscribe and le uh, turn on notifications. So, that's the intensity uh, for uh, forecast right here. Many of the intensity models have Nigel actually getting up to Category 2 strength, which is pretty interesting. NHC has this at Category 3. I think the rapid intensification features are there for that kind of intensification. There is plenty of warm water pretty much going into this right here. We can go ahead and show you what we have. We have 28 plus degrees Celsius of water where Hurricane Nigel is right now. Definitely should be enough to exploit that. 
Meanwhile, there are this area of interest that is going to come off the coast of Africa. Similar warm water situation right here. And if it continues to move further to the west, it could tap into this whole 30 plus degree Celsius waters. This has been completely untapped since the start of hurricane season. So if any system gets through that, the chances of rapid intensification go through the roof for that. There is 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit waters from the western half of the main development region all the way to the Gulf of Mexico over here. So that's what we have going on with the global sea temperatures. Next one we're showing you is the uh, the ocean heat content values that we have pulled up right here. OHC values very, very large in the Caribbean, parts of the Gulf parts of the Wayne development region where Nigel is right now it's in an area of 100 ocean heat content so if it can organize and take advantage of this whole situation that's going on then yeah I can I don't really see any problems with this potentially rapidly intensifying at a later at a later point so we'll have to keep an eye on it where this area of interest in the for the first half of the main development region there's like 25 maybe 50 OHC due to all the storms that are moving through there. However, as we move towards the western half of the MDR, it starts to increase to 75, then it starts to increase to 100, then 125, then 150, and then as you enter the Caribbean, we start seeing areas of 175 to 200 OHC. I'm not saying this thing's going to enter the Caribbean, but there's definitely a possibility if that high if that Bermuda high uh, pushes further to the south. So that's what we have going on with the ocean heat content. Next, uh, right there, next thing we're showing you is the wind shear Go, to wrap this up in a nice little bow. The wind shear, pretty much what we have right here, the wind shear across a lot of this where Nigel is, it's in a pocket of very low wind shear. There's a lot of outflow surrounding it, so it's becoming a very beautiful system as time continues to go on. Where the Bahamas is right now, there is an area of weak wind shear as of right now, the Gulf of Mexico is being impacted by shear that's not going to last forever so that's what we have going on caribbean starting to fluctuate with shear off and on off and on we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on but the western half of the main development region other than a 30 pocket of uh, of outflow right here um it's pretty good for development i will say that and next thing we'll show you is the eastern pacific is not eastern pacific eastern atlantic ocean right here and where this whole system's building up right there there is a bit of wind shear to the uh, right over here that's going to intrude maybe early on however that is expected to recede over the next couple of days or so and we'll definitely keep an eye on it as time continues to go on, as this looks like a very potentially serious threat going down the road. We'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel on all the threats that are going on. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out and helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.